This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is our Tuesday meeting, and we are dealing with leader. Mm -hmm. To be or not to be a leader in the body of Christ. And what leaders walk like, what leaders talk like, what leaders quack like, what leaders waddle like, and what leaders look like. What are you? That's my question. All right. Now we're going to go, we're going to start with the most unruly member of our, of our bodies, the mouth. <laughs> My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Let me stop there real quick. You know, a lot of people, you get a group together. And you get one person trying to usurp authority and then you get another person trying to be the boss and you get another person trying to run everything. You get another one who's a control freak, another one who's a critic. Everything's wrong with what everybody else is doing. Yeah, that's being many masters. You got an ego war going on. Everybody's battling for position. Everybody's vying <laughs> for a spot. So what I want to share with you is a lot of this stuff that we have to struggle with, even the stuff that comes out of our mouth, comes from pride, insecurity, fear. Yeah, believe it or not, fear and pride combined with insecurity, you got a hard person to deal with. Small people are the most difficult people, and I'm not talking five foot two, four foot eight. I'm talking stature and character. Small people are difficult to deal with. They are hell on wheels, baby, because their egos are at stake and they must protect and guard their ego, their image, everything. You can't say things like that to me. Don't you know who I am? I'm Dr. So-and-so, I'm elder. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you don't realize that it is totally ego. It is total pride. All right. Verse two. For in many things, we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body you're going to find out one of the biggest battles you'll have will be between your brain, your will, and that tongue. That's one of the biggest battles. If somebody can tell you off, cuss you out, talk to you like you're a fool, like they dragged you out from the gutter and they're getting ready to kick you to the curb and you can stand there with dignity and take it with your mouth shut, and not worry about what people are thinking about you and how small you look and how dare they talk to me like that. You can stand there and take it. Guess what? You've grown a lot because there are many people, many of you that I'm talking to on YouTube that can't keep your mouth shut. If somebody says something about your mama or your pappy or your son or your daughter, you're ready to jump off knee deep and, uh, <laughs> woo, into someone's behind. You're ready to show them who you are and where you come from. Yeah, you ready to fill them in, baby. And so they'll never forget you because ain't nobody going to talk to you like that. So there's something wrong with that. You're not in the spirit. You're in your flesh. Verse three, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. You know, little things horses have in their mouth and you see the reins that you pull, pull them to the right, to the left, pull back, stop, you click, they take off and run. You're controlling everything that horse does by that bit that's in his mouth. Well, check it out. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very 
small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth, which means it's a little thing that steers that boat. It's little. The boat can be gigantic, but that little thing that does the steering is tiny in comparison. Right. No matter what the wind is doing, no matter what the waves are doing, that little thing can control where that boat goes and where that boat does not go. Even so, the tongue is a little member. It's little. <laughs> yeah, compared to everything else, it's little. Right? <laughs> And boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You can have a cigarette that's lit. You can have a spark from a match. A little flame that's that big. And lay it on a dry piece of twig. And you can end up with acres and acres and acres of forest fire. From that one little flame. That's the way your mouth can do. Your mouth can do so much destruction. Some of your kids are jacked up because of your mouth. Some of your husbands have left you. Some of them have committed suicide because they couldn't take any more of your mouth. That's right. Some of your women have committed suicide because you, your men couldn't stop their mouths. Your men are critical and you put them down and you talk about them like they got 10 tails and you disrespect them in public and blah, 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 and you cuss them and cuss them and curse them and curse them. You can't shut your mouth. They do something, uh, you know, what you doing? I told, and I told you blah, 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 blah. And your mouth is off to the races. Diarrhea of the mouth is not the characteristic of a leader. All right. Now, the sad part is our tongue, like fire, can consume people's very spirit. You can drive a person's spirit out. You don't even have to lay a hand on them. Just let that tongue get to flapping in your mouth, like a bell clapper. And you are tearing your kids down. You're tearing your wife down. You're tearing your co-workers down. You're tearing your staff members down. Because you're insecure and you've got to be the big dog. you got to be the head honcho. You like being the boss. You like lording over people. Letting them know you be the big cheese around here. No, baby, you're small. You're the little mouse hovering in the corner for fear that everybody would know just how little and insignificant you really feel. But you're casting a big shadow. You've learned how to cast a big shadow so you can run around intimidating everybody because you're that insecure and you feel that small. That is not of God. That is not from love. That is a very sick, weak, unhealthy, wimpish attitude to have. And it's a wimpish way to deal with people because you're more afraid of them than they are of you. Check it out. Check it out. Thank you, Lord. Compare a, a pit bull to a chihuahua. A pit bull is strutting down the street. He's cool. He knows the power he's got in these jaws. He's cool. He's mellow as a chilla. Ain't nobody gonna mess with him. Cause once he clamps down, they won't let go, they won't get away. He got the power. Right? The pit bull, let's use him as an example of God's leaders. And then you got these little wimpy people that want to go around casting big shadows, intimidating everybody. That's the chihuahua. You walk down the street and a little old runt looks like a rat with big ears. They're just going off. All that bark, all that noise. Talking loud. Saying nothing. And so many of you have been spending your lives being about nothing, saying nothing. You think it's cute. You think it makes you look like something. Yeah, it does. Makes you look like a fool. 
That's what it makes you look like. But you think, because you have been around so many fools, you've grown to admire them. But you don't know what a real woman, a real man is. You don't know what a real, whole, healthy person with self-control and love in their heart, one that is fully satisfied, one that is fully confident, you don't know what that is. You lived in a sick environment so long, you think that it, it, it works. Yeah, that's the way you do it. Cuss them out. That's right. Get all up in their face. You know, what you going to do? What you going to do? Tell me something. That's right. And Or you get somebody that walks around and, 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 and you know, some of you are like this. Your wife is in there trying to fix your meal. She's trying to, she's keeping the house spotless for you because you're hell on wheels. You're hard to get along with. Not because she's not doing a good job but because you're little, you're the little mouse in the corner. And you see all that your wife is capable of, but you can't afford to let her see it because she'll outshine you. So you drag her down in every way you can. Do you hear what I'm saying? You drag her down. Drag her down over and over with your mouth. Da, 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 da. Wife is trying to fix food. You didn't put enough food. You didn't put enough salt in the food. You didn't put enough this. You know what you wait till the last minute to get my meal done? Can't be satisfied. Nothing good enough for you. I would have told that woman, take a walk and let you sit and live by yourself for a while. That's what I would have told her to do. Because I wouldn't wish you on my worst enemy. See, those of you who allow your tongue to spew venom everywhere you go, trust me when I say this, and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm hoping the Holy Spirit opens your eyes. He has to do it for each one of us when we walk with him. He has to show us where we're sick. He has to show us where we're psychologically off and tilted. He has to show us where we fall short, where we don't meet the mark. He has to show us what's wrong with us. And I hope he does it for you. I hope you listen long enough. Because what it means is there's something inside of you, deep down, that's sick. You're either wounded or you have been marred by a very sick environment. Or you have never had an example of wholeness lived in front of you. So you think the ways of a fool are the ways of life. That's the way you get over. That's the way you protect yourself. You think you can lord over somebody and rise up and intimidate them? Disrespect them in public? Look at him with that look like, I know you're not getting ready to get on my last nerve. You better line up before I shame you in front of all our friends. Get it together. And, and, and you want to see the fear in their face. It does something to you. Makes you feel like you're rising above. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're stooping very low. You really are. And see, a lot of you want to be leaders. You want to be leaders on the job place. You want to be leaders in the marketplace. You want to be leaders online. You want to be leaders in church. You want to be leaders. You want to run things. You want to be the boss. You want to do. You want everybody to look up to you. You're the last word, baby. You're the one that says yay or nay. Mm -hmm. The buck stops here. You have no idea. God will spew you out of his mouth, do whatever he needs to do. But he's not going to use you as a leader. If people allow you to get up in there, that's on them. But it doesn't mean that because you're in a leadership position that you have been ordained, chosen, or anointed by God. Many are called, but few are chosen. Remember that. I'm not going to be long. This is basically what I'm dealing with. It's leadership. 
The traits of a leader is self-control. A leader that works for God has to be full of a heart of love, boldness. On top of that, on top of that, the leader needs to have a mind that's mindful of the people he's working around, that he's, 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 he's leading. You've got to have a heart and a mind for the people. You have to be concerned, genuinely concerned for the people that are in your sphere of influence. And on top of that, you got to be faithful. You got to be faithful, y'all. You can't pop up one minute and be gone the next and pop up the next minute and be gone the next and ain't nobody, you know, nobody can tell when you're going to be there, when you're not going to be there. They got a meeting set up and you sitting up there at home, forgot all about it. Well, it wasn't that important to you. If you always forget about something, it really ain't that important to you. That's prayer time. If you really want to be a leader for God, the Bible says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. There are plenty of times I show up here. I may not do that great of a job, but I show up. One thing I know, God honors faithfulness. It's not in your ability. It's in your availability. And if you ain't ever there because you are to the race, you tiptoeing to the tulip, you dealing with all your cares of life. You ain't got time. And you have the time, don't even remember. You made commitments for a lunch thing. You made commitments for over here to counsel somebody. You made commitments. You forgot all about it. I mean, everybody forgets from time to time, but when it's your pattern, and something needs to be prayed about. Whether it's with your family, your children, your spouse, your relatives, your friends, your co-workers, whatever your commitments are. Whatever your commitments are. If you're lackadaisical and haphazard, that's not the characteristic of a leader. And if you know you're called to be a leader, then you know you got to work on that one. Because people, if you become flaky, the people around you will flake out on you. Think about it. We've been doing this church thing for two and a half years now. Imagine how it could have possibly lasted this, even this long, this is not long, but even this long, if five times out of 10, I forgot all about the meeting. Think about it. What would that say to you? It would say that the ministry, neither the ministry nor you were that important to me. Hmm. That God wasn't even that important to me. That's right. Think about that. See, we're talking about being leaders. The characteristics, you got to have a tongue that, 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 that brings life, a tongue that edifies. See, in verse 9, it says, verse 8, verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith, bless we God. Hallelujah. Even the Father and therefore... And excuse me, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, you, nah, 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 nah. Mm -hmm. which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things are not so to be. That's right. Doth a fountain send forth the same sweet, uh, the same thing, sweet water and bitter? No, I have a glass of water here. One minute I sip is going to be sweet. The next minute I sip is going to be bitter. No. That's the, see, <laughs> when we follow God and he teaches us the biggest 
Characteristic of a leader is a good follower. One that takes good advice, follows advice, acts on the advice. Whatever you learn in God, you ought to be activating in your life. That's called being easily entreated. That's a major characteristic of a leader in the making. The best leaders used to be the best followers. Not following trends and styles and following the, 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 the popular uh, uh, attitude and the popular opinions. No, I'm talking about following God, following man as he follows God, following the word, following Jesus, following, learning, sitting, shutting up and listening, humbling oneself, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will raise you up. But pride comes before a fall, and a haughty heart before destruction. You got to be careful with that. The other thing the Bible says is a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you notice you're unstable in all your ways, you're haphazard, and you're flaky, go to God and ask him what's really going on with you or what's really not going on with you. Because it's obvious, most of us know when we're called to be a leader, but we also know where we fall short. And some of us just casually deal with it. It's not that big of a deal to us. We've been doing it so long, just hey, that's the way I roll, baby. No, that's not the way God rolls. If one day the sun was up and the next two weeks the sun disappeared and took a trip out out of the out of the uh, uh, the Milky Way, this planet would self-destruct in, in days, hour, days, weeks, months. It would self-destruct in no time. We would all drop dead from cold. We'd freeze to death. Everything God plants is on schedule. You notice that everything God does. You can count. I don't care if it's raining and dark and cloudy. You know the sun is where it belongs. Mm -hmm. It's keeping all of its appointments. Now, what's wrong with us? Why can't we? What's wrong? What's really going on with you? Hmm. Angry at God and you're just not confessing it? You're angry at people and you're just not confessing that? What's really going on with you? You're losing interest in the things of God? What's going Okay? And those of you who browbeat God's people, oh my goodness, the Bible says you better hope and pray that it's better for you that a millstone be around your neck than that you offend one of these little ones. And there are many pastors and leaders out there, uh, worship leaders, choir leaders that offend, offend, offend. And you have no idea the damage you're doing because you can't control that flat in the middle of your face. That hole in your mug is like a bullet. It's like a bullet chamber. It shoots and kills everything it lands at, everything it aims at. Well, oh, okay. So my thing to you, my challenge, is go to God and ask him to put the mirror, the Holy Ghost mirror in front of you. Help you look at yourself. Lord, see me, check me, see if there be any wicked way in me. Ask God to check you, show you yourself. We all have to do that all the time, or we will lose. We won't know how bad we stink if we're not checking in with God. You may not be living in sin, but you may stink because of the way you handle God's things, the things of God, the people of God. Mm. You may not be out there screwing and doing, but you may be doing damage to God's people. See, all of these things are part of being a leader. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to be long. I'm stopping because, uh, for the sake of time. Uh, uh, we have a few members that are kind of tired. But I want to share with you, go to God, pray, ask him to help you. I know where I fall short. I'm not sitting up there saying, well, oh, well, you know, <laughs> you know, God knows. No, you know, that God knows my heart is bull. That's bull. 
No, that's an excuse. That's rationalization. That's sweeping it under the rug. You working on it? You doing anything with it? Or are you just letting it run wild? Whatever your weaknesses are. Anyway, Father, I ask you to help us all, Lord. Help me, help my brothers and sisters in our online church, help our brothers and sisters on YouTube, help those that are in the valley of decision as to whether they want to commit their lives to you on YouTube. I pray that you help all of us, Father. Draw us close to you and give us self-control, verbal control, emotional control, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Forgive us for sin and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. With all the fruits piled up in there and all the gifts too. Thank you, Lord. Amen.